Okay, so uh, let's start our afternoon session. The speaker is uh, Chung Ho Chung, and he's going to tell us about the mechanism for a strange metal in a rare earth intermetallic compounds. Please. Okay, uh, thank you. So, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this invitation. Um, so, in this talk, um, I will describe a possible mechanism uh, to realize this very exotic strange metal ground state or strange metal phase uh, in the context of the heavy fermion metals. And this work um, has been published uh, here in collaboration with my two postdocs, Dr. Uh, Zhang Fan Wang and Dr. Yongye Zhang in Taiwan. So, um, so I will first give you a, a very general introduction to strange metal phenomenology in the, in the context of the heavy fermion and uh, say cuprates. And then I will describe this particular material that we will uh, focus in this talk, which is the serum palladium um, aluminum com compound, uh, which is a frustrated condo lattice compound, which shows a strange metal behavior. And, and then I'll describe you know, a mechanism for such a strange metal phase to appear, um, which is based on the fluctuating uh, condo stabilized uh, critical spin liquid. Uh, in the context of the anti ferromagnetic condo Heisenberg lattice model. Okay, so then I'll give you a summary. So, um, as you all know, and it is well known that the um, non firm liquid uh, behavior appears often near a quantum critical point. Uh, in this case, the famous case is the ethereum rhodium to silicon to the heavy fermi metal. Um, <clears throat> you can see the tornado shape of this so-called strange metal region um, persists all the way down to zero temperature, but only at this critical field, um, which separates these two stable phases. One is the anti-ferromagnetic from the liquid phase. Um, on the left, on the right, it is uh, a heavy from the liquid with the condo correlations. Okay, so this, this kind of a strange metal behavior at the final temperature uh, could be observed uh, experiments across a variety of materials, uh, but uh, you know, this state is really unstable when temperature is getting lower and lower until you reach a very unstable quantum critical point. So this is a very unstable uh, state of matter. So that's the first message. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the definition of a strange metal um, uh, phenomena are twofold. One is the T-linear resistivity. Any? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So as you can see that the uh, perfect T-linear resistivity persists, you know, um, from some temperature to all the way to the lowest temperature. And, and that is the uh, phenomenon number one. And, uh, oops, I cannot change the page. Uh, the page is frozen. You can move this to bottom to go forward and backwards. Okay. But if you keep it pressed, it shows as a point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the second um, phenomena for strange metal. Uh, is from specific heat coefficient uh, or gamma coefficient CD over T. As you can see here, that there is a logarithmic divergence um, in low temperatures for such a uh, um, stretch metal material. Uh, but sometimes it would follow up by uh, power law singularity at very low temperatures. So, uh, so these are the two things um, that uh, people call this stretch metal. And this kind of phenomena occurs you know, uh, across a variety of strongly correlated electron systems. For example, in the cuprase, as uh, shown in an earlier talk by Earth, that this is the cuprase, which shows perfectly linear, you know, from, you know, 150 until all the way to the lowest temperature. And, um, <clears throat> and more, you know, uh, equally important is the gamma coefficients. You can see here that the, you know, log T uh, divergence of this gamma coefficients for this, um, you know, cuprates persist all the way to low temperatures. Now, these two phenomena 
have to come uh, together. And to explain this phenomena, uh, we should focus uh, not just the linear theory stability, but the thermodynamics also are very important and also a quantum critical point. So that's the um, main message. Whether or not there is exist um, quantum critical point somewhere uh, near this critical doping is another issue. So, and this phenomenology uh, exists across, you know, many different uh, materials such as organic superconductors and ion nicktides uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, uh, but uh, recently uh, even more exotic um, um, strand metal phenomenology occurs um, when we have a stable uh, strand metal ground state, meaning in this material, which I focus on this um, T power law uh, behavior in resistivity persists all the way down to almost zero temperature, but more importantly, it extends um, you know, for a finite range in this um, tuning parameter, for example, pressure or the field. So remember this Eterbium rhodium to silicon two, it's tornado shape ends at a quantum critical point, but here it's not, it's extended to the finite range. In field and pressure, it indicates a very exotic possible strand metal ground state. Okay, so, so that's the really, um, you know, uh, exotic about this uh, phenomenology. So, so how to stabilize this very unstable strand metal phenomena is the issue. Okay, so and another example of this strange metal phase appears in germanium doped YRS. Um, you know, if we dope this YRS by germanium, you will see extended region of here um, in terms of the field that you can see that the nail temperature is going down to zero. Um, but before the heavy from liquid forms, there is a um, finite range in this field that there is no magnetic long range order. Um, and at the same time, the T linear resistivity persists all the way down to zero temperature. So this is another uh, exotic strand metal phase. And at the same time, this uh, specific heat coefficient also diverges as a logarithmic uh, in temperature and followed by a power law divergence. Okay, so, um, you know, in earlier studies of this uh, GYRS, um, you know, uh, there are there are some observations that this uh, transport and thermodynamics, which shows the strange metal behavior, uh, live in the different temperature window. Okay, so the transport is the charge sector, um, and the uh, you know thermodynamics may come from you know this the spin sector. So it indicates that maybe a breakup of the quasi particles into the spin and charge sectors. Um, in this very strange, uh, strange metal state. Okay, and the general question that we want to address is how can a stable strange metal phase exist in principle, given the fact that the strange metal properties mostly emerge from unstable quantum critical point. So that's the most uh, exotic, uh, you know, uh, property of this um, material. And can this phase emerge from the competition or collaboration between a condo screening and a spin liquid state. And would the physical quasi particle effectively get fractionalized into spin, spin on, and charge or condo or hold on excitations? And the strange metal phase is located, is closely related to the critical fluctuations of either excitation. So, spin charge separation scenario is it relevant or not? Okay. And finally, is there omega of the scaling? in the dynamical properties for this material, which is a signature of a quantum criticality. So the omega of this scaling is again, another very important signature to pin uh, you know, down the um, you know, system to be in a quantum critical um, uh, point or phase. So let's go back to this material that we focus on. So this is a serum palladium aluminum compound on the fuel and the pressure. And this is the heavy Fermi uh, metal and the crystal structure uh, looks like the, you know, this Kagame uh, lattice where the serum atoms are uh, sitting. So the serum carries uh, 5D and 4F electrons, which could lead to the condo and also so-called RKKY interactions, which I will talk about later. And um, as I show you, the transport properties show this extended region of uh, 
uh, quasi-t-linear receptivity. Um, but at the same time, you can see the, uh, you know, the end of this paramagnetic states, there is a condo breakdown transition, which I will talk about in just a moment. And these transitions uh, play a very important role uh, in theory to actually give rise to uh, some microscopic account for this behavior. And the condo temperature is about five Kelvin. And these two phases are antiferromagnetic uh, metal and heavy from liquid with a condo uh, effect. And both red regions shows T square behavior. And so this magnetic structure of this material are a little bit uh, complicated. It consists of icing coupling um, among serum atoms and they are three dimensional. So along the C axis, we have antiferromagnetic icing coupling. So it's give rise to this CW type of this long range order. And in the AB plan, the Kagame plan, it consists of two um, icing chains with opposite spins, uh, which are marked by blue chains and red chains. And along the blue and red chains, there are ferromagnetic icing type of coupling, um, but there is an antiferromagnetic icing coupling between these two chains. So it's a bit complicated, it's J1 and J2, and also uh, you know, C-axis antiferromagnetic coupling. So the long range order, um, is probably um, due to this uh, C-axis, um, you know, antiferromagnetic coupling. Uh, but this uh, long-range order could be easily suppressed by applying the field or pressure, and that's how they uh, observe this paramagnetic phase. So this is a global phase of this material in terms of pressure and field. As you can see, that uh, you know, uh, between this uh, antiferromagnetic long-range order phase and the heavy from liquid, there exists, uh, you know, this finite size um, you know, window over which we can see non from liquid behavior. So this is not a point, but the phase. The green and yellowish regions are all this uh, strange metal phase. So experimentally, you can tune the field pressure along this arrow direction so that you across a finite range where you see this non from liquid phase. What is the blue line? What is the blue line? So this, this line? Okay, so this is uh, probably the uh, the crossover between a small and large Fermi surfaces, which is due to the condo breakdown transition. Okay, so the uh, so-called spin liquid uh, or paramagnetic uh, uh, behavior is is shown from several different observations. The first one is AC spin susceptibility, as you can see from this figure that the um, you know this. Um, as you lower temperature, the AC spin susceptibility first uh, arises and then saturate. Okay, so which uh, you know looks like a, a Pauli spin susceptibility um, occurs here, which indicates the fermionic excitations as a spin excitations, and also um, you know it shows the signature of the spin liquid. Okay, in that paramagnetic window. So this behavior also. Um, was observed under pressure, as you can see that between this nail temperature and the maximum temperature of the susceptibility that there is a finite uh, window in temperature range uh, where uh, you see this paramagnetic uh, or spin liquid-like behavior, okay? And more recently, it's just this year, um, there's a mu SR experiment on this material, uh, this undoped one, which uh, indicates in indeed this is a spin liquid type because the mu SR signal um, shows uh, you know, um, a exponential decay um, uh, of the spectra with some oscillations if this state is in a long range order phase. Uh, but uh, you know, below, you know, above the critical pressure in this SL or spin liquids region, so um, this mu SR doesn't pick up the oscillation. So there's no oscillations, meaning no long range order. And it is indeed a signature of a paramagnetic spin liquid phase. Okay, so, so this phase is real. Yeah, this is also metallic. So it's a metallic spin liquid, like. Uh, of course, this is just a possibility to really, you know, uh, have a smoking gun evidence for spin liquid, you need more evidence such as neutron scattering and so on. So, but this, um, you know, um, just experiment just tells you that, you know, spin liquid is a possibility 
um, or you know, paramagnetic state is a possibility. And the, about the condo breakdown transition, uh, from this whole coefficient measurement, this material shows a jump um, you know, uh, between the small Fermi surface at low field to the a large Fermi surface at the high field. So uh, it clearly indicates um, you know, a, a, a very sharp jump transition uh, between uh, you know, the, the two sides of the Fermi surface, which indicates that you know, if there's a condo effect, which I'll talk about in just a moment, and this F electron participate the Fermi surface, the Fermi surface will get enlarged. But if condo uh, disappears, then the Fermi surface is small. So it, it's uh, directly uh, indicating that, uh, you know, whether or not the condo effect play a role here. So there's a transition, um, you know, near the end of the paramagnetic uh, phase that this is a condo breakdown transition. And we could define this crossover scale, B star. Okay, so, um, and, in the thermodynamics, um, it's, it shows the T-logarithmic divergence of gamma coefficients I mentioned. Uh, you can see here from this um, you know, um, uh, plus that they dope this material by uh, nickel and between this 14 and 20% of the doping. So you can see this logarithmic divergence of a gamma coefficient. But you can see clearly from this plot that uh, in the transport, you, you got two different colors, greenish, and oranges, so which indicates that there are two kinds of you know uh, non -ferm liquid behavior. Here is the same thing. So if you make a fit to this um, you know um, this figure, you can see that there are two kinds of logarithmic divergence, which I will address in just a moment. So first, uh, at intermediate temperature range, that you could fit this data by a logarithmic um, you know uh, curve, and at the very low temperature, close to the ground state, you can also fit this by another logarithmic divergent curve. Okay, so double logarithmic curves is seen here. And so the, um, the you know, talking about this origin of this effect, uh, we should go back to the condo in competition with the RKKY. So in the condo lattice, we know that this D and F electron can hybridize, um, you know, which uh, uh, lead to the condo cloud and this will enlarge the firm surface. And also the condo correlation can mediate the um, you know, nearest neighbor spin-spin um, uh, couplings uh, between the local moment and which we call this RKKY. So this RKKY is usually antiferromagnetic in many heavy ferromagnetic compounds. So the competition between these two uh, you know, uh, can describe uh, qualitative features of the strange metal in many uh, heavy ferromagnetic compounds. Uh, but this is the um, uh, doniak based diagram based on this long range I mean, at order phase in competition with the condo, and there exists a quantum critical point, and uh, above finite temperature, the uh, QCP, you can see the strange metal. But this is just a, a standard or conventional uh, view of this um, in our system. Uh, remember, there's no long range order in our uh, interest uh, region because the magnetic frustration, and that. Um, you know, leads to this uh, uh, scenario, uh, you know, um, uh, unlikely to occur. So we need to revise this scenario that the competition now uh, should be between, uh, you know, kind of a paramagnetic state. Uh, in our case, we propose this being liquid metal in competition with the condo effect. Yes. And I'm glad to see how how do we distinguish a, a, a strongly silicon state from a paramagnet? And neither of them has long range um, a, a magnetic order, and, a, and therefore a vanishing AC sensitivity. Oh, uh, so good question. Thank you. So remember this AC sensitivity um, for um, ordinary. So so for spin liquids, uh, you know, um, doesn't shoot up as a Q revised or as a paramagnetic uh, material, right? It's is saturate, okay? It doesn't go down to zero either. So it saturates the finite value. So this is the indication of a spin liquid-like behavior. Of course, it has other possibilities, but this clearly distinguish uh, this huge. But the metal would do the same. Metal would, would also saturate. Right, right, right. So this doesn't include exclude this uh, metal, okay? It's just, uh, right. Okay, thank you for the question. So, um, so let me continue. So, um, so then because of this, um, we uh, 
you know, uh, try to find out what are the key quantum critical fluctuations to give rise to such uh, strange metal behavior. Um, in particular, um, we propose that this bosonic condo fluctuations, um, you know, uh, in combination with the fermionic RVB spin liquids made of a fermionic spinons uh, could lead to such a behavior. So, uh, so we will discuss that uh, in the following. So this is our early attempt to account for this Germanian doped wire S um, in terms of uh, um, Anderson's say spin liquid, which is a gap spin liquid with the you know, decoupled uh, metal um, underneath. And this state uh, is in competition with the condo, okay? So, and uh, we use this perturbative RG scheme um, to actually quantitatively account for such uh, linear T resistivity and also this all crossover. Okay, but the this this stays the spin liquid as a gap spin liquid um, with a metallic uh, behavior. So this state has not been found experimentally. So we uh, need to find an alternative, you know, other approach. So, uh, but uh, our our earlier study clearly see this linear T resistivity can um, arise from this kind of uh, uh, scattering of electrons from this condo uh, fluctuation. Uh, diagram, which I will, uh, you know, tell you just a moment. And this kind of a scattering processes could lead to uh, T linear resistivity. Okay, and uh, here is our model. Um, we uh, generalize this SU two Condo Heisenberg a lattice model uh, to, you know, multi channel and large and limit, and on the square lattice for simplicity. And we solve this model in a dynamical way. So this is a Metonian. Um, consists of the um, you know this um, isolated conduction electron bus, uh, which we call this uh, local bus approximation. And uh, locally, this conduction electron could um, you know be uh, this the spins on the uh, local conduction bus could be screened uh, by counter effect by local moment, which uh, is shown in um, in here H F. And this condo effect uh, is uh, described uh, by a fermionic. Uh, you know, um, uh, by quadratic term here, and the uh, so-called Heisenberg or RKKY term uh, is written in terms of the um, you know particle particle Anderson uh, type of uh, RVB spin liquid, um, and we generalize this model to SPN across SUK minus one, um, and and we solve the model in a large and, and multi-channel limit where this kappa is K over N is fixed. So, um, so, and then we further put this channel symmetry to this multi-channel condo uh, term. Um, you know, uh, the purpose of doing this is to uh, favor uh, the fully screened condo uh, from liquid in the condo region when J condo is much larger than J R K K Y. On the other hand, this multi-channel fluctuating condo term uh, will give rise to the uh, non fermi liquid effect. Okay, so this is a marriage between these two um, terms. One is the uh, condo from liquid, another is the non from liquid, which can be induced by this multi channel condo uh, term. Okay, so first we do this um, at a mean view level. Uh, we uh, decouple this condo Heisenberg term in the, by the Hubbard Stronovich transformation, and we define this mean view order parameters, uh, which are um, two bosonic fields. One is a bosonic RVB made of a fermionic spinons like this. Another is bosonic condo correlations, which is the hybridization between the conduction electron and the local electron like this. And, and then we go beyond the mean field, um, uh, you know, by decoupling this condo hybridization term in terms of a condensate part, because this is uh, the boson field. It could get both condensation or it could uh, not get the Boson condensation, okay? And plus this fluctuating condo term. And this plays a very important role to lead to this non firm liquid uh, physics. And then we uh, solve the model by including self energy of uh, those, you know, um, local fermions and conducting electrons and this whole long condo uh, fluctuating field um, self consistently uh, in this Dyson type of equation and which uh, is in some sense, similar to the DMFT, okay? And we solve the model in the large limit, multi-channel limits, and the mean field variables are solved by the zero-point equations like this. 
So this is our solution. Um, as you can see that we have, um, you know, all the phases that we need. Uh, this condo phase on the right, when the condo uh, is larger than this JH, and we have a spin liquid yellow phase uh, where we are in the other region, this RKKY dominates, and we have a pink region, uh, which is a coexisting phase between the condo and RVB, and this is the superconducting phase, which was, uh, you know, uh, proposed long time ago, uh, you know, in the context of the cuprase. And the, uh, the spin nones and whole on spectral functions are gapless. And uh, in the yellow region, which is um, the, the phase that uh, corresponds to the strange metal phase, the experiments, okay? So as you can see that the, um, uh, the whole on the spin known uh, spectral weights are um, uh, non-gapped and in particular, this F spin nones show the van Hoblad singularity um, because of this uh, spin on Fermi surface, um, you know, at half field where this, you know, effective spin is one half or kappa is one half here, which shows a particle hole symmetry. And uh, the whole long spectral weight also uh, shows, uh, um, you know, a power law uh, vanish, but uh, it is not gapped. Okay, so both whole long spin nones are not gapped. So this is the gapless spin liquid state made of gapless, um, you know, whole longs and gapless spin nones. And the, uh, the spin known spectral weight uh, shows a logarithmic um, in energy divergence. And so, and there is a critical point GQC, we separate the superconducting phase and uh, a yellow uh, strange metal spin liquid phase. And this gray area, um, you know, is, is the non form liquid strange metal region associated with this GQC, this critical point. So, and to illustrate this, uh, this kind of a strange metal phase, uh, we use a cartoon picture where this um, Anderson's RVB spin liquid coupled to the whole long field and also the electron field through this condo fluctuating terms. Um, and this uh, term stabilized the spin liquid uh, in, in, a, you know, uh, in a strange metal region. So, so and, but this physics has been discussed um, long time ago. Um, I mean, similar uh, physics. Uh, in the context of condo stabilized spin liquid, close to magnetic instability okay, at the mean field level. And uh, this uh, theory was proposed by Professor Nathan Andre and Pierce Coleman uh, in 1989. So thanks to this mechanism, so uh, we think that our mechanism is very close to this one. Um, so the, this mechanism says that the spin liquid state, although um, shows a higher energy uh, than the antiferromagnetic states, but with the help of the condo hybridization, and this energy of spin liquid could actually, uh, you know, uh, be lower than the long range order phase. And this phase uh, is a superconducting phase when, when both condo and spin liquid exists. And so this superconducting state um, uh, can account for a class of heavy fermion superconducting state. Okay, so, by, uh, you know, by means of the condo hybridization. The here is very similar. So uh, instead of a, a mean field uh, condo term, uh, we couple the spin liquid with the uh, fluctuating condo term. And, and indeed, we find this, uh, you know, spin liquid is not uh, ordinary spin liquid, but shows a strange metal behavior. So this is the, uh, the first, um, you know, observable that we calculated uh, in this strange metal phase that this electron scattering rate, which is, uh, proportional to this imaginary part of the T matrix, and which is this diagram here, and uh, which is uh, proportional to this electrical resistivity when its connection bars are connected. So as you can see that we do see this two kind of power law behavior. One is the intermediate temperature range, which is sub uh, linear in temperature, and at a very low temperature, it is uh, super linear. Okay, uh, the power exponent is 1.6. And we do find uh, omega of t scaling the T matrix. Um, we, we have two kind of uh, omega of t scaling. Uh, one is at very low omega of t ratio. Another is, is in the intermediate range, which corresponds to the yellow and gray region, respectively. So, and you can compare our results with the experiments, which shows clearly this uh, two, you know, um, uh, color coded region in this. Uh, you know, strange metal phase. One is the greenish, another is orangish. 
So it shows two different power law, exactly this is what we found. And we also um, have uh, results uh, away from the particle symmetry by tuning away the kappa um, you know, um, from one half. And we do find in our parameter region that uh, this uh, beam actually shows three linear behavior. And uh, coming back to the thermodynamics, we calculate the entropy and specific heat coefficient. And we do find two logarithmic uh, you know, scattering regions. One is the intermediate region, another is a you know, very low temperature region, which agrees qualitatively very well with what the experimental uh, has been observed. Okay, and this logarithmic singularity, um, you know, uh, the origin of that we find, we think this is due, probably due to the Van Hoff singularity of the 2D uh, spin on Fermi surface. And we also calculate this. Um, uh, static spin susceptibility at low temperatures, and we uh, also find this T logarithmic divergence. And, and the dynamic spin susceptibility shows a uh, uh, plateau at uh, low temperatures, which indicates this is, uh, you know, it is consistent with the Pauli spin susceptibility. And, and again, it's a logarithmic uh, temperature divergence. And so, um, so what is the quantum critical about this phase? Well, um, this is the most uh, general phase diagram in terms of temperature and kappa with effective spin, and also this ratio between J count and J out K Y. As you can see that this strange metal phase live along this uh, kappa equals one half line, which is a particle symmetric line. So um, along this kappa direction, we have a quantum critical point exactly at kappa equals one half. Um, so this is a quantum critical point. If we uh, are looking at this phase diagram along the kappa direction, but if we fix the kappa to be at one half and go along this direction of this coupling constant, and this quantum critical point uh, extends to the finite um, range in coupling constant space. So it is a quantum critical phase. So it is a quantum critical point, and also it is a quantum critical phase, depending on where you look at this phase diagram. So, and this um, strange metal behavior persists uh, even away from this. Um, particle symmetry point, as you can see from here, um, uh, but uh, on two sides of the transition, we, we have a gapped spin liquid, which uh, shows valence bound solid. And uh, also we have a gap from the spin on the whole on a spectral function. Okay, so um, we check the stability of this transmetal phase. And first the, um, you know, this gapless spin liquid made of a uh, fermionic spinons is actually U1 spin liquid. And, and we know that if, if the U1 spin liquid uh, is gapped, then we have instant tone uh, effect, which will uh, make this you know, uh, unstable against this dimerization. But uh, uh, fortunately, we have a um, you know, spin on Fermi surface. And from earlier studies uh, shown in this paper, that once we have a spin on Fermi surface, and the instant tone uh, effect is actually irrelevant on the RG, so uh, which stabilizes our uh, critical spin liquid. And we also, um, you know, um, uh, find this, uh, you know, uh, what are these, these phase diagrams, the finite N and finite K, and they all look uh, qualitatively the same. And we also go um, away from this particle hole symmetry by considering the particle hole asymmetry of a conduction band, and the result is also the same. And we also go away from the particle symmetry point of local fermions. And as, as, as I just showed you that this, uh, behavior persists up to the final temperature and then it exponential decay because of the gap that's been on the whole long. Okay, and uh, what about the channel symmetry? Okay, so uh, I assume that this, you know, condo um, uh, coupling shows, you know, multi-channel and one of the channel uh, has a larger condo coupling uh, than the others. What, what about we make all this coupling constant equal uh, for all the channels? And this is so called the channel symmetric large N on the Heisenberg model, and from earlier studies uh, joined this paper, that the ground state should be the overscreened um, non firm liquid. Okay, and same thing here. So we, we find that this uh, should be a, a overscreened non firm liquid, and, but this yellow region is still there. So this non firm liquid strange metal phase, um, which is a spin liquid coupled with condo fluctuations, still persist okay so this is very robust phase um, okay so so let me just uh, finally just um, 
try to make some connections to the Q price. So um, as we can uh, see from this plot, that this plot has been shown many, many times that um, in Q price close to the critical doping, uh, there's uh, uh, there was uh, uh, you know observed that uh, there's a jump of a whole coefficient um, from the lower value to the uh, to the larger value, indicating this Fermi surface is reconstructed near this critical doping, and which uh, you know is similar in spirit this kind of a condo breakdown scenario that this Fermi surface evolved from a smaller to the larger value, and but more recently. Uh, there are more evidence uh, from other Q price materials, which shows a uh, very interesting strange metal uh, phase. As you can see here, this telia receptivity in Q price um, you know, persists to the lower temperature and over a, a finite range in doping. Okay, starting from twenty percent to almost thirty percent. Thirty percent. This whole range so strange metal. Okay, so it's called a strange metal phase. And this whole coefficient uh, does not show the jump. Instead, it shows a smooth crossover from the lower value to the larger value. Okay, so it brings the interesting question whether there's a quantum critical point, uh, you know, underneath the superconducting dome, or whether this is a non liquid phase, or or a quantum critical point. It's the it's the hot debate at the moment. So um, uh, so this is still go, this debate is still going on. So let me summarize my talk. So um, uh, in our simplified uh, condo high simple model by a large GM multi-channel approach, uh, we find a stable strange metal phase appear in our parameter space. And, uh, and this phase emerges because of the coupling between the RVB-like spin liquid to a uh, condo fluctuations. And which shows uh, in transport, this quasi-linear T uh, scattering rate and also T log spin divergence specific heat, uh, where both phenomena has been observed in uh, cerium palladium aluminum compound. And um, and yeah, so I uh, uh, before the end of the talk, let me acknowledge um, you know uh, various experts uh, that uh, I discussed with um, the uh, Joe Thompson and uh, Frank Staglish, and congratulations uh, to um, Professor Frank Staglish for this. Uh, um, Low temperature world. And uh, theorists, uh, T. Miao C. and Pierce Coleman, Matthias Voita, and Stefan Kushner. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thanks very much. Questions? Uh, actually, I have a question from online. Yes, yes, please. Uh, hi. Um, you say that uh, this uh, heavy fermion system is nearly 2D. Uh, now, uh, actually, it, it, there is some uh, coupling between the two dimensional components. So, this uh, coupling should introduce some kind of uh, lower temperature cutoff to the specific heat divergence. Uh, the logarithmic ones, which you, it seems to me you attribute the Vanova singularity of the spin liquid component. So this Vanova singularity should be lifted uh, by this small uh, interlayer coupling, and this should be reflected into the specific heat behavior at low, at very low temperature. Is there any chance to see uh, this? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for the question. So in, indeed, so. Our models uh, is uh, a bit simplified. We consider a 2D model, but uh, uh, the real material is three-dimensional. I agree. Um, so uh, but the most important, um, I think, uh, say features come from these layers um, of those uh, materials. And I also agree that perhaps there is a cutoff at a very low temperature because of an interlayer coupling, which we uh, did not take this into account in our theory. Yes. I have a, a much, much more dumb question. I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to understand when, when you're talking about this critical line, what exactly was the sharp definition of 
what's critical there. What is zero or infinity there that's not zero or infinity, you know, in horizontally, infinitesimally away? Is it is it just because of the observables? Is there some quantity, some correlation function that diverges only at that point? Yeah, very good question. Um, so this is the you know your question, right? Okay, so if we go along the kappa direction, then this is the uh, the crossover that we found. Okay. Um, what is kappa? Kappa is effective spin uh, on each side, effectively in the Lorentzian language. Okay. So kappa x one half means that we have one you know uh, spin one half local moment on each side, just uh, spin one half in SU two limit. So if we uh, change this value of kappa. And we, we still see this non liquid behavior, but it's bounded by this kind of a parabola, okay? And uh, out of this, outside of this region, uh, we can see that the spin on the holons are gap out. So the signatures of this critical region is defined by whether you can see this ex exponential decay. And that defines the boundary here. Is that, is that answering question? Yes. Any other questions? There's the one. There's the one. Uh, so uh, when you showed the crystal, it was not clear. Uh, is there inversion symmetry in the crystal or is it a non-central symmetry crystal? Uh, I suppose this is there, this is a inversion symmetric material. So um, at least we don't consider inversion symmetry breaking in our theory. But if I look at the crystal, it doesn't seem like the cerium atoms are at the inversion center. So where is the inversion center in this crystal? Where is this the inversion center of the material? So if I look at this, I, the, the, the pink ones are the, no, the pink ones are the ceriums. And yeah. They don't seem to be inversion centers, right? So yeah. where is the inversion center? Is it off, off yeah. the moment um, or? Yeah, so uh, it's not easy to see here, uh, this plot. So, but, uh, you know, um, I am not aware of the, you know, this discussion about this inversion symmetry breaking in this material at the moment. Maybe there is a inversion symmetry breaking. Okay, so what right. I'm going for is that if you have an inversion center and the cerium is not at the inversion center, then there are at least two sub lattices of the cerium. And if you, if you then think of the two ceriums, as sub lattices, then wouldn't you have to think of two channel condo models because the oh. anti symmetric and the symmetric combinations oh, okay. will give you two different condo channels, which are here. Degenerate. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think this, this, the two folds is one is from experimental point of view, one is from theory point of view. Okay. So from experimental point of view, this is what it is, right? So you have an icing paramagnet along the blue and red chain, there's anti paramagnet uh, between these two. Okay, so um, well, so and and there's a missing, uh, you know, making a moment uh, in the middle, which is caused by frustration. Okay, so it's not clear whether we have a two side per unit cell here. Okay, so what we are doing here is just simplify this um, this uh, you know material by considering just a square lattice. Condo Heisenberg lattice model. And what is square about this? Well, if you look at this anti paramagnetic uh, you know, exchange coupling, it lives along J2, which is not on the Kagame lattice. And if you look at the C axis anti paramagnetic coupling, and you, know, you could do some, you know, uh, um, uh, say, hand waving or some uh, uh, perturbation calculation that it may induce uh, anti paramagnetic spin spin couplings on the J1. So the underlying anti paramagnetic fluctuations uh, is unfrustrated. Okay. You know, from by J1 to J2. So, so that's probably is a coincidence, but it's a very good coincidence that we consider as well at this. And that perhaps is the reason why they see this logarithmic divergence in gamma coefficients because of this square-like, uh, you know, uh, structure in, uh, you know, spin fluctuations, and also the condo fluctuations. Okay, but the frustration plays a very important role, um, which suppress 
you know, on, on one hand, this long range order, on the other hand, um, you know, to give rise to this, uh, you know, fluctuating condo to play around. Okay, I think there's one question from the chat. Uh, um, thank you for this nice uh, presentation. Um, if, uh, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, just, just one second, I'll just finish this one. Oh, Sabir, um, hello. Uh, Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is the difference between a spin liquid and a spin gas? Uh, well, I'm not expert on spin gas, um, but uh, um, um, <clears throat> I suppose from the spin spin correlation, you could distinguish. Between yeah, I guess a spin glass has frozen moments. Frozen moments, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so, Beer, you wanted to ask a question? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> I, I missed the beginning of your talk, but are you assuming the spin fluctuations are, uh, which are giving rise to linear resistivity, they are completely momentum independent, the spectrum of them? Is that correct? Um, scattering rates are is momentum independent. I mean, the, the, the spin fluctuation spectrum has no momentum dependence. Oh, yeah. You Here just, we are considering uh, a momentum independent uh, calculation. Okay. Which is uh, BMFT like. We consider a local bus approximation. So, no right. K dependent okay. in our theory. So, in other words, the momentum is integrated out to some extent. And we are yeah. generalizing our approach to consider the K dependent self energy. And if we have that um, down, then we could discuss the K dependent uh, quantity. Yeah, but there's also vertex corrections to the conductivity associated with drag effects. That it's not simply a question of looking at momentum dependence of the self energy. Uh, anyway, the other question was uh, you had a spin on Fermi surface. Uh, we know that in 2D, the spin on Fermi surface has a uh, t to the two thirds specific heat because once you include gauge fluctuations. Uh, what about that? Right, we did not consider the gauge fluctuations. Um, um, for for okay. this argument that I uh, I, I showed that the uh, from say Song C Lee's earlier um, <clears throat> studies that uh, once we have a spin on Fermi surface, then U one gauge field would not uh, practically change this um, spin liquid. Um, so we did not consider that effect in our theory. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so yes. just for simplification, you said two things. You said momentum independent and momentum integrated. Which one is correct? Momentum independent spectrum, or when you solve for self energy, you integrate over momentum and so, sorry for the confusion. It's momentum independent approach. <laughs> Rami? <laughs> Well, oh, so, so sorry, I, I take this back. So what we did is um, we solve this local Green's functions and local self energies. Of course, there is a dispersion in the conduction band, which we already integrated out so that we don't have the information once we solve the local Green's function and self energies. But, but I think the question is uh, about the momentum dependence of the spin fluctuations. The momentum depends on dependence of the spin. Yeah, spin susceptibility uh, has a momentum dependence or not? Is experiment the theory of the experiment. Neutron scattering, are there neutron scattering experiments showing how the spin behaves in momentum space? Oh yeah, you mean experimentally? From yeah. neutron scattering, yeah. Um, I indeed this should show if you, this is spin liquid it should show this broad distribution in this neutron uh, spectrum, and that I agree. And in our theory, we cannot capture this. As I mentioned, this self energy and Green's function are solved locally, so uh, there is uh, no way in the present uh, theory that we could account for such a. Um, momentum the frequency dependence in the neutron scattering data. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, we cannot address this issue. 
Right. Now, thank okay. you for your questions. Okay, so uh, let's uh, thank uh, Chung Hu again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a poster. Uh, yeah, presentations now. So I think we're going from A to K. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And and uh, right. Uh, so.